It's a new month here at Hensler Financial, and we've found three important things to focus on in the market this month. Number one, small and mid-cap stocks. As you likely know, large cap stocks, specifically mega cap tech and communication services, have been the best asset class to own in the first half of 2024, as they drove the lion's share of the S&P 500's first half return of 15.29%. Over this same period, small and mid cap stocks, as measured by the S&P 600 and 400, have underperformed considerably, with small caps down 0.74% in the first half, while mid caps posted a 6.15% return over the same period. Since the start of the third quarter, however, there have been signs of life in both small and mid cap stocks, which have returned 6.84 and 2.39% respectively, while the S&P 500, or large cap stocks, have lost 0.54%. Broadly speaking, valuations within the small and mid-cap space remain attractive relative to both their own historical price-to-earnings multiples and to the price-to-earnings multiple of the S&P 500. At the time of this writing, the price-to-earnings ratios of the S&P small-cap and mid-cap indices were 16 and 16.5 respectively, while the large-cap index trades at approximately 24 times earnings. While there are various reasons that might point to why these smaller stocks have recently begun to outperform their larger peers, including lower rates, technicals, and possibly even implications from the political outlook, it's impossible to say with certainty that this trend will continue, but it's something we'll certainly be watching. Number two, China tensions. The darlings of the U.S. stock market have experienced volatility in recent weeks as comments from both President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump have increased concerns of future prospects in China and Taiwan. President Biden reportedly told its allies in Japan and the Netherlands that it may invoke what's called the Foreign Direct Product Rule to limit sales to China. That allows the U.S. to impose controls on any company that uses even a tiny amount of U.S. technology. Former President Trump told Bloomberg Businessweek in an interview that Taiwan would have to pay for its own defense. The comments, whether they represent a formal policy position or not, undermine the U.S. commitment to defending Taiwan in the event that China tries to retake what it views as part of its country. Both comments create uncertainty as to U.S. technology companies' future sales and earnings. The former could result in fewer sales in China specifically for advanced semiconductor companies, while the latter suggests a potential invasion of Taiwan by China could cause massive disruptions to the semiconductor manufacturing hub in Taiwan, having far-ranging effects across tech and the goods economy as a whole. Number 3. Second Quarter Earnings at the time of this recording, roughly 40% of S&P 500 companies have reported earnings. Eight of 11 sectors are reporting year-over-year -year growth, with communication services, information technology, financials, and healthcare reporting double-digit earnings growth. On the other hand, three sectors are reporting a year-over-year -year decline in earnings, led by the materials sector. Of those companies that have reported, 78% have reported a positive EPS surprise, and 60% have reported a positive revenue surprise, meaning they have achieved more than the Wall Street analyst consensus for earnings and sales, respectively. So far, the blended year-over-year -year earnings growth rate for the S&P 500 is 9.8%. If 9.8% is the actual growth rate for the quarter, it will mark the highest year-over-year -year earnings growth rate reported by the index since the fourth quarter of 2021. Just two of the mega cap seven stocks have reported earnings as of this recording, but four of the remaining five are set to report in the coming days, which could have an impact on how we grade earnings season. So far, the percentage of S&P 500 companies reporting positive earnings surprises is above the average levels. However, the magnitude of earnings surprises is below average. The index as a whole is reporting higher earnings for the second quarter today relative to forecasts at the end of the second quarter and, as previously noted, reporting its highest year-over-year -year earnings growth rate since the fourth quarter of 2021. Despite this, the market is rewarding positive earnings surprises reported by S&P 500 companies less than average and punishing negative EPS surprises reported by S&P 500 companies more than average as measured by their stock moves following their reports. And that's been your Market Minute for the month of August. Thanks for watching.